It's not something that you just dump something on. It's not a big truck. It's a series of tubes. Sweet. Ted was loud today. Really? Hello? <laughs> Sorry. I love my phone. Just put it there just in case. Wait. Where are you going? <laughs> Put it up. <laughs> All the way across the room. It's a series of tubes. Tubes. And gay pirates. <laughs> and epic mealtime sauce bosses. And Scott Brown is right. We do need a dubstep remix. Right? Set whoever Anybody wants to make it. Anybody who would like it. to make us a dubstep remix of that. We are all about make it. us make us a theme and we'll play it on our show. We have got a ton of stuff to talk about today, so there is gonna be no dilly dallying. Other than the camera's freaking out. Okay, I don't know what that was. We why we had the pull. Um, we've got one, Just two, three, four, five, six, it. what, seven uh <laughs> trailers to show today? I think so, yes. Including Stockholm from which is the new project from Scott Brown. Yeah. Um, Wait, hold on. Can we just show the awesomeness of the shirt? Your sh her epic mealtime shirt. I love she's it. So proud we of. found it in in a rock shop, like a rock and roll shop in Vancouver, and it's an epic mealtime shirt. But it says Sauce Boss. It's me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mashing taters like a mash hater. Yeah. I think that's that's something that everybody should get accustomed to. <laughs> I look like a giant lemon. You look like a daisy. A fat giant lemon. I'm kind of a gay pirate, but that's okay. <laughs> Whatever it works. A gay fat pirate lemon. <laughs> that's me. From American Eagle. <laughs> From so we have American the pilot to, to the pilots. We're oh. going to talk about the Celebrate the Web pilots first, but to let you guys no. know. Oh, I'm sorry. That was really loud. We are going to be talking about uh, showing you the trailers for Stockholm, Silent City, Not Now John. Epilogue the series, Tug the Bull Terrier, Verve, and A Thousand Ways to Kill a Noob. Those are the trailers that we're going to be uh, showing you today in the second half of the show. The first half of the show, we are going to try to jam in me drooling about uh, what? Dead Space information <laughs> that will be coming out tomorrow at E3. What? And the Celebrate the Web 6 Woo! pilots that we haven't talked about yet. As well as any various and sundry news she wants to talk about and promos for this coming week's podcast. Which um, apparently gets me going, if people know. The Celebrate the Web 6 pilot competition winners will be announced live on our show Wednesday, June 6th. We're very excited about that. We're excited to have um, Logan and, and Jenny on the show. Um... We have finally finished watching all of the pilots. Also on the show this week and on various Facebooks, we are going to be discussing uh, Daybreak 2012, as well as uh, Away We Happened, which are AT&T's new foray into the space, both of which I happen to like. I liked Daybreak. What did you think? What? Paying attention is good. Yes. Daybreak 2012. Oh, the AT&T one. Yeah, you think? Yeah, 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 that was good. I'm sorry. I was like, Daybreak? I was, why was I thinking of the Russian film? What? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, I liked it. It was They're good. They're both using product well placement in a little bit different way. And yeah. while it may be awkward at times to some of you um, and may appear to be an elongated commercial, I still say it's better than a pre-roll ad. Yes, I agree. Although I understand that some people just don't like product placement, especially if it's not totally seamless. Although I think um, Daybreak 2012 is a little bit more organic than A Way We Happened. Although A Way We Happened, they're just using the phones. You know what I mean? So it just it's personal preference. I still like seeing the brands moving into this space and doing um, this as opposed to pre-roll ads. 
Because I'm getting sick of seeing some of them pre-roll ads. I don't know about y'all. There's got to be a better way to do this. Got to be. Cricket's leaving. <laughs> She's out. Cricket is leaving us. Um, it's good to see some new people in the chat room. Scott Brown is in there. Uh, Danielle Earl is in the chat room. So it's really nice to see uh, some new people in the chat room. Really nice to see people I've been, I've been talking to on Facebook about the daybreak thing and whose opinions that I respect. And I think, Eva, you know that I'm talking about you because I do respect where you're coming from. And I think you're right to a certain extent, even though we have to agree to disagree on the, the outcome of the show. Perhaps, perhaps not. I may change my mind later on. <laughs> Karen just absolutely solidified her her production company namesake. Hardly working TV. She can't hear the show right now because she's in a meeting where she's supposed to be paying attention. And instead, she's watching us. <laughs> and Talk like puppets. So... Just so you guys know, we are kind of geeking out a little bit because Scott Brown's in the chat room. We're such big fans of his. Including, I will say, the Celebrate the Web pilot he did yes! um, early on with Cooper Harris that I still wish would have been made into a web series. Yeah. Do you remember that? The therapy one with, that was with good. Cooper? I yeah. loved that show. I thought that pilot could have been a killer web series, and I really wish that it that it would have been made. It was just so good. Hmm. Um, do you have any news that you want to talk about really quickly? Nope. <laughs> we don't have time. You just laid out that there was, like, all these trailers and stuff, so I didn't bother. Okay, E3 is tomorrow. Other than E3, yeah, like, everything I have in my inbox is E3 and, and EA, EA, Microsoft has a press conference at, like, 9.30 in the morning. Yeah. But Where EA, they're probably going to discuss Halo 4 and the web series that they're EA, doing. EA, and I understand this is a bad word to Amanda right now because she's still pissed off about Mass Effect 3. But EA is making a huge announcement about Dead Space 3 tomorrow. We already know it's coming. We already know the tentative release date is February 2013. But I am so involved in this story and this franchise and have played the games and have all the DLCs and the books and everything. The only thing I don't have is the Android game, and I'm getting that. Uh, it's coming. And it looks interesting. And so what if it has drop-in, drop-out co-op? I am willing to trust Visceral at this point. Shut it. I am willing to trust Visceral at this point, and I can't wait for EA's press conference tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific. It will be on Spike. It will be on IGN. And you can watch it live. Um, so please be thinking of me as I go into a drooling ball at the very announcement of Dead Space 3 and look for a pre-order. Because I'm going to be jonesing for a pre-order come tomorrow. Because I love that story. The sci-fi geek in me just can't wait. Okay, I'm done. You want to talk about your phone next? Scott did say they're, they're still trying on that one. I really liked that pilot. No, I don't want to talk, talk about, about my phone. phone? You want to no. talk about your awesome game? And the fact how they're not going to wreck your trilogy? And the fact that they were still the same company because Bioware is an ass hat? No? No? You don't want to talk about it? I'm oh, sorry. I don't know. Did I mention happened. we have a gaming show in pre production? <laughs> Y'all are going to love it. Trust me. We even you have don't a killer no name, more. but we're not going to share don't it yet. Say no more. Okay. We have to get some more software and hardware for it, too. So. <laughs> okay, let's talk Celebrate the Web Pilots. What? I know you don't want to. <sighs> Please don't make me talk about the one. <laughs> I know she doesn't want... <laughs> I know she doesn't want to talk about the Celebrate the Web Pilots, but somebody needs to. Okay? I love Jenny Powell and everybody behind Celebrate the Web. And I love that creators will will jump on the bandwagon and make shows. Yes. But I will say that this year's crop of shows were lacking in some things. <laughs> Not all the shows, but some of them. Um, <sighs> now, we've talked about the ones that we... This Human Body and the other ones mm -hmm. that we saw the other day. So we're only going to talk about, uh, briefly, each of the ones that we had not seen until today. That we hadn't finished. Oh shit, what is today? Um. Sorry. <laughs> I only have three theory? days. I have three days to do something. Anyway, what? Hmm? Three days. Isn't the sixth the cutoff day? The eighth. Oh! Okay, never mind. Um, so the first one we want to talk about is The Bell and the Bot. That was a good one. I like that one. That one made me think. I on TV said he's. Uh, I know, waiting. I saw. <laughs> um, Bell and the Bot. I. Liked Bell and the Bot. I liked yeah. it a lot. In fact, I would say it's my favorite of all of them. But. Now, to be fair, 
and to be critical because that's what we do. Um, I would have liked a, a, a tiny, tiny, tiniest of hints of how they time traveled. Even just like an, an accidental, we stumbled you didn't upon have, a thing. You didn't, didn't have to lay it all out for me, but the tiniest hint of how or why or when or what happened would have helped me in, in staying in the story. Um, I know for Amanda, what would have helped her stay in the story a little bit better was the apartment that they were in. That if yeah. they were trying to replicate the the time that they were from and the way that they dressed and the things that they used, they you would, would think that they would have surrounded the themselves with the lives. trappings of, of that time a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but overall, Belle and the Bot was our favorite pilot. It was really, really good. I like the steam that came out of Edward's mask. But at, this, at, at the same time, I also liked um, the end of it. A lot of people said they were confused at the end. I'm like, no, you have to think. Um, it makes me think, and I think instead of saying confused, people should, should maybe consider that, that the show's ending isn't odd. It just makes you consider other options. Mm -hmm. Like for me, I was like, oh, okay. So does that mean he's from there too? Or that orange highlighter? Yeah. Sorry. Or was stuff passed down from yeah, other things? Or like, is this like a family lineage thing that's passed down to him and that's why? In other words, it made us think. Yeah. So, you don't want to spend too much on everybody. No, I wasn't confused. I just I thought it made me think that was good. Um, Gray, which you didn't get a chance to see, um, was very, very interesting. I liked Gray. It is probably my overall second favorite pilot overall. And I think it's probably the pilot with the best production values mm -hmm. and the overall kind of most put together show for me. Um... The writing was quite good in it. Uh, bits of the acting, especially from the best friend, lacked the emotional depth that I would have liked to have seen, given the subject matter. But I could forgive that because I felt the lead character and his story were very, very compelling. And I would like to watch more of that. I, I really would. So that, to me, does the job of what a pilot should do, which is draw you into the story and make you want to know more. And in that respect, um, Gray worked very, very well, as did Belle and the Bot. Right? Mm -hmm. So, moving on, um, I have kind of a general comment to Gemini and Forgiving 1863. And it is this. Um... Both of those pilots were done by younger creators, as in it seemed like middle school and high school yeah. uh, level age creators. And I don't want to talk about the quality of these shows in such a way as to ever discourage young creators from creating something again. Because both of these shows had the gestation of interesting ideas and interesting enough pilots, interesting enough scripts and, and writing that I could see potential there. Mm -hmm. um, I think what those two pilots show me is that we within this space, be it the IWTV or we as creators independently, need to have Celebrate the Web, whatever organization can or, or could take it on. The IWTV seems a natural choice. A mentoring program. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. For young emerging creators. Because when you get these kids that are coming out of high school, like we had in the last one and in this one, middle school and high school creators, they want to create stuff. They all want to be Freddie Wong. But they need to be mentored in how to use equipment, how to do sound. They need to be polished. They need to be polished a little bit. And I think that those of us who are creating in this space, um, I think it's interesting. And I think it's it's incumbent upon us to nurture that talent so that we are bringing that talent into the space and we are benefiting from their passion while teaching them that there, that there are things that you need to learn and to do. And you right. can't just pick up a camera and go and film something that's going to be compelling enough to be submitted to a competition and actually win. Um, I, I thought Gemini was interesting their sound issues took me right out of it though <laughs> and and both forgiving 1863 and gemini had terrible sound problems and again that's why i say they need mentoring because especially with sound they, they could use some tips 
from people who have done this before and, and who could help them. 1863 had an interesting backstory, and I would have liked I would have liked to have seen it fleshed out a little bit more. Mm. Um, and for the acting and blocking to be a little bit better, maybe they needed a more seasoned director or at least somebody who was a little bit had done something before um, or studied and had a mentor who was helping them. Right. Yeah, that's what I have to say about those two. Um, before we move on to the others, I want to say that there was an absolutely horrible amount of sound issues in the pilots for Celebrate the Web 6. I would say almost across the board, almost every single web series at some a web series pilot in this competition at some point within their pilot had some kind of sound issue. Oh my god, yes. Almost every single so one, if not so every that, single one. That even even there were some that I couldn't even listen to with headphones on. Like I like would throw the headphones off because it was blowing they blew out their microphone. Even even it's it's and I'm like, that is such that is, that's hard mm -hmm. to hear. And and knowing, like, thinking of all the stuff that we have to deal with our equipment, if we blew out one of our mics, which we have done, it's a horrible, horrible thing to witness. It's another horrible thing to actually hear it happen. It's a third horrible thing to realize that other people have, have you guys come know along with that journey. You guys know from watching our show and from listening to our podcast that sound is right up there with story as far as the issues that, that we deal with. And it doesn't matter how good your story is. If people get pulled out of your of your web series or your show or your pilot or your, even your trailer because your sound is horrendous, that's horrible and they're never going to come back. And a good story cannot overcome bad sound because they can't hear you or you're too loud and too shrill and it's just... You have to have good sound. And as the space grows, it's very, very important that we mentor these young creators so that they know that the sound is important. It's just as important, if not more so, than editing and, and all the other little things that they seem to be learning and, and they're not picking up on good sound. But then again, you look at the, the pilots across the board, all of them had sound issues. Mm -hmm. And that worries me that we are not putting the kind of importance on sound as we are putting on how it looks. We have great DPs coming in, but we don't have good sound engineers and we don't have people who know what they're doing. Okay. And and when you're talking about crew, they're both just as important. Well, and Nate just said... Because I can says... get bad past a blurry screen or right. not being shot in high def right. or maybe some of the shot selections not being perfect. But once the sound is gone, I'm out. And so what Nate just said, he said he teaches his students that without good sound, they won't, most people won't even give it a chance, which is true. And even then, here's something interesting. Most people won't give your show a chance if the sound is horrible. And there are others who, you know, they can't hear. And so they'll still watch your show for its descriptive content and what's mm -hmm. being shown to them on screen. But what I find interesting, too, is, is another thing that I saw across all of these was if I muted it because I couldn't stand the sound just to watch it, I still couldn't figure out what was going on. And that, to me, is such a huge disconnect. Because mm -hmm. I feel that all shows, if you take away an element, you should still be able to figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's because I'm, I'm a weird purveyor of, of sensory deprivation in my entertainment. Because I like to, I don't know, no, I like, I will, I will mute something and watch it and I can figure it out and I find that to be awesome. Oh, I do that all the time. I can I will unmute mute it a and, drama. And not watch it. Especially dramas. Yeah. I will mute a dramatic web series or a dramatic television show and watch it without sound to watch body language, mm -hmm. eye contact, mm -hmm. um, the, the blocking, The conveyance spacing. of emotion and story yes. through, without word, without sound, without music swells or anything to trigger any sort of, you know, thing that I've been conditioned to be triggered to with that. Because we all know in dramatic shows and movies, there's that swell of music. There's rarely any silence ever. But Scott Brown just kind of nailed it. The enjoyment of a story, true enjoyment of a story is fragile. If you're aware of any part of the form, then you're going to probably lose it. Right. So if you become aware of the sound or aware if of the visual. shot selection, and this happens a lot, becomes Changes. a little too precious. Yeah. It becomes a little too knowing and self-aware. Exposure. That they the know wall. this is a really cool shot, so they do it a lot yeah. instead of sparingly. If if 
if the show itself is even too precious or too self-aware. If I am not so into your story that I have time to notice the sound or the shot selection or your editing and I can pick it out, I'm not paying attention to your story. I'm not immersed in your story. You haven't hooked me. Whereas sometimes I'll watch something and other people will point out, well, this was bad or that was bad. And I'm like, I didn't even notice any of that because I was so into the story that all of that went right over my head. Right. And at that point, your story is there. You can fix the rest. You can yeah. learn the rest. Yeah. But you can't get somebody back after you screamed in the microphone for the first five minutes of your pilot because I only made it past the first three. Yeah. And I won't do it. But, I mean, we're far enough back and it sounds like we're having a natural conversation. And I'm going to speak quietly because it's still very, very loud. But there are some mm. people who don't realize that when you have a microphone, that they talk loudly. Or they talk as if they're having a regular conversation. You don't want me to do that right here because I'm going to blow out your fucking microphones. Well, so. it's just like, you know, it, and it's like anything. If you're aware, if you can look at a green screen and you can see the outline. The halo. The CGI, the halo. The halo. The, CG, the CGI halo. Then, I you know, am, you're oh. pulled out of it. Well, but we need to move on. No, I was going to say, visually, that is a huge, I like conditioned myself. I purposefully watched movies that were high in digital effects to catch the halo. And I, and now I did that so much that now even when I watch movies and they say, oh, it's new technology and it's great and blah, it's like, I can still see your halo. Well, that's why shows like Job Hunters. Yeah. The web series Job Hunters is so fascinating to us because their CG like, is seamless. I can their see. digital effects are seamless. Right. Same with, with Blake Calhoun and Continuum. Uh-huh. There's, and, and there's continuum the television series that's right. on tonight again with the seamless cg and there's a couple of shows where i'm like well okay so i kind of saw the i see the digital of your blood i see that where you splatter it's okay but it's it's when you do other graphics and things where you're like oh i can oh, see need to halo. why because you have other stuff to talk about no no okay um let's talk about undercover employed um, I thought they used some interesting filming techniques there, and they tried to use a little digital stuff. Um, the story seemed a little pedestrian to me. Um, it seemed like a music video in parts. <laughs> I'm reading my own notes. Um, Stream of consciousness. That's one thing. The no. sound was, again, uneven. Uneven, yeah. So then when I chuckled in parts, I couldn't figure out why I was chuckling, and the bottom of the line is my mind was wandering. Yeah. My mind started to wander. Well, see, and that's one thing I think everybody should do. And I kind of like the spy thing, you know? I kinda, yeah. I kind of like the spy premise, so I really wanted to like it, but then I'm like, uh, well, I should be setting up for the show, and let me have <laughs> this pilot open uh, in this window, like but this. I'm not actually going to watch, and I'm listening, and yeah, it's bad. It's bad news all the way around. See, that's what should have happened. You should have been like that on your screen. What is happening? But yeah. instead, you weren't. And, Which and I will say, for Bell and the Bot, for this human body... And for um, Gray, I never looked away from the story. Yeah. For those. Um, and I would definitely recommend stream of consciousness note taking when you watch shows. Oh, yeah. That's how we review shows. We write <laughs> down everything that we think while we're watching it. And then sometimes you either see us talking about it for the first time on the show or like Karen from Breaking Point knows, <laughs> sometimes we just go to talking about it on the podcast because we didn't have a chance to discuss it until that to very moment. To break down. Because we have to break... Like, we broke down... We actually broke down our shows before we do our shows because if we don't, we have some very interesting and perhaps yeah. awkward moments and we don't want that. And um, if, apparently I write with a big freaking crayon. A brew That's hope. This is. A um, brew hope. All, all my stream of consciousness <laughs> notes were for a brew hope is what is it with the uneven sound? Yeah. And that this one... I'm clearly not the demo because I don't see beer pong being a good premise for a web series. I see it being a really neat episode or gag for a in an ongoing series. web series like The Guild or like a, or something along those lines. A web but series I, about a bar. Right. But I don't see or beer pong or... tournaments as really being something that could sustain a, a longer web but series. But, you know, you say that there is a so I'm big, not the demo. big subculture of beer pong. Like, there is. And I'm not I'm not knocking. It's the same thing with, like, the air guitarists. They've made movies. But so, it's just, it's not a knock on that. It's just, as a sustainable web series, I don't And I would really like to see creators moving beyond the 18 to 29-year-old male demo. 
there's a lot of us out here, the two of us included, <laughs> who are not in that demo, and we watch more content than I would say any of the creators who made pilots in this Celebrate the Web. I'm going to be a little crass. I would like them to skip past the demographic because there are four, as in two pairs of titties and two vajayjays in the room. And they would all like to be appeased. Okay? Just saying. There's a lot of people who watch content online. <laughs> and as more and more people begin to get their content from wherever, doesn't matter if they're watching it on their television, but that content originates from wherever, and especially as more and more content originates from online, you've got to move beyond that 18 to 28 demo that's male only and is only into games and beer and sex. Because there's a lot more people online watching stuff. Which is not And to we say... want a little bit more... We want a little bit more. Let's right. just put it at that. We want a little bit more. And our interests may be a little bit different. And when it comes to, especially if you're looking for sponsors and advertisers and brands, a lot of the people who would watch those shows aren't going to buy from those brands. But we will if you cater to us. And right. I'm not talking about wigs because that's, that, no. <laughs> but see, that's, no. that's not to say that women don't enjoy those same things that you mentioned. Right? It, it just means that perhaps we enjoy them in a different, less bashed o over the head with it kind of manner. I don't know. Maybe it's because we think too much. I have no clue. I don't know. I don't but... know. I just, <laughs> I would like to see some of this moving. And I don't, when I say that I want stuff that caters to me that I like, that I will enjoy, I do not mean that shit on a stick they're trying to <laughs> shove down our throats from wigs. I'm sorry. There may be people out there that like wigs. I am not one of them. And I have watched 11 of the 15 episodes of Jan. And I'm telling you, unless the it. last two pull something out of their asses that make this thing amazing and have some kind of twist at the end that I didn't see coming, I am not impressed. <laughs> I am not at all impressed. But that is not a Celebrate the Web pilot, and we are going to move right the hell on. Um, <coughs> I'm sorry we didn't warn enough about wigs, but you know what? I don't want to color anybody's opinion because that happens. But... I, you have to. That's one of those train wrecks that you kind of. Just oh my have to god! Say, go and look. let me tell you right now, Greg Storm, Karen, Danielle, Earl, Scott Brown, all of you, should go and watch the behind the scenes. Oh my! god. You need god. to at least watch episodes one, two, and six of behind the scenes on Jan, because you will be. I swear you to god. will have so many new words in your vocabulary and expletives that you have never said before, that will come out of your mouth as a creator in this space. If you watch episodes one, three, and six of the behind the scenes, you are not even going to know. You. That's that's just where it's at. Is that enough of a warning? <laughs> okay, moving on. Political Machine is the next Celebrate the Web pilot I want to talk about. Um, it was well shot and pretty to look at. That is the first thing that I will say about it. Yeah. Um, it was a very interesting premise, And the too. premise is very, very interesting yeah. of him being an actual machine. However, the execution was clumsy. Now, I think it could be cleaned up. I think it could be helped. But um, it was clumsy. And they had sound issues. And I think they watched last year's pilot winner and tried to make a comedy out of it. But that's just me. I might be wrong. Totally wrong about that. I'm sorry if you made... Political Machine. I think Political Machine is very interesting. Um, I think it has potential as a web series in, for development. But I think that they'd have to redo the pilot and, and kind of smooth out those edges with it. Um, yeah. The idea behind Political Machines was, was a good one. Um, the acting was a little bit shaky and the presentation was clumsy mm -hmm. and that's all I want to say about it. But that. it was very, like I said, the premise was very interesting. I would be curious if it was perhaps polished and edited again. Again. That maybe it wouldn't convey um, something. Scarf Man Origins be. was filmed very well in the first five minutes. And then we went... And then it was like then it went, somebody Then it became something jobs. else than what I thought it was in the beginning. Yeah. However, again, halfway decent premise, very well filmed. The sound was better. Yeah. Um, again, not my demo, but interesting. Uh, I want to say that we did, this human body was one that we liked. It's in our top three. Mm -hmm. My only problem with this human body is that the editing 
kind of threw me out a little bit. And I think that if they went back and re-edited that and made it a little bit more smooth and made the sound more smooth across the board, uh, that it would have been a seamless pilot. And I will say out of the three, uh, our top three pilots, um, Bell and the Bot, Gray, and This Human Body, um, I felt that This Human Body probably came on top for the writing. Mm -hmm. Gray came on top as the best <clears throat> overall pilot presentation for, for me. And Bell and the Bot was probably the most interesting premise. Mm -hmm. This Out human the body three. was Higlitz, right? Yes. Yes. That's what I thought. Um, so that would be our top three. Bell and the Bot, in no particular order. Bell and the Bot, Gray, and This Human Body would be our top three of the pilots. Um, before I talk about one of the pilots that did not make it, I want to talk about The Mum. Because I know you guys want to hear, or at least a couple of people want to hear what um, we have to say. Uh, Where's the tape? What tape? <laughs> Duct tape. Don't say nothing. Um, I don't like to discourage any creators. And I have been, I would say, for the last three hours in a conundrum about what to say about the mum. Because I don't want to encourage, discourage creators from creating. Mm -hmm. Because we don't do that here. That's not what we do. We support the space. We are creators in this space. We have two shows in pre-production ourselves. So we don't want to discourage anybody. But. But. I cannot sit here and say that this pilot is as good as the rest. And I have to tell you, it, it was the hardest one to get through. But I did watch it all right through the bloopers and the credits. Um, and then I made her watch it. I have no words. It was terrible. The sound was almost stopped me from watching it within the first two seconds. Um, I have no idea what it was about. The acting was awkward at best. Um, it was like bad reality TV. I have no idea why everyone was so rude. I don't know what the story was about. The blocking was horrible. The lighting was bad. The shot selection was terrible. <laughs> Oh my god. I, ha I still wait. have no idea what it's about. Can I say one thing? You're going to talk about the guy in the mirror, aren't you? Yes. Go ahead. How do you not see yourself in a mirror in every shot in the dressing, the dress shop? Especially when it was in the wide shot and no one was in the mirror and you stand up and go over to the camera to change something on it and come back down. It's like, was that, was that part of it? Are we filming a reality show? We just saw the cameraman. I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. He was, and he was in the whole shot. I don't know how you edit that and get it ready for, for, for entry into a contest and not see that. I don't know how you don't listen to your sound. I don't know how you don't watch this through. I, and here's the thing. I have a real problem with somebody submitting that for a competition. Because that's your, that's like your business card that's is what like you can your, do. That's like showing people what you're capable of doing. If you want to create in this space, I, I would think if it were me, and damn it, I hate doing this. Um, By the way. If it were me, I would have looked at the final product and said, we cannot submit this. Because I would have watched the pilots from last year, maybe a couple of years back, and I would have looked at, at the kind of stuff that people are submitting. I would be well-versed in this space and understand the kind of stuff that's being made. And I could not in good conscience have submitted that to this contest. And it's... This isn't like angry It was criticism. beyond clumsy. It was bad. It was bad. It's, 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 it's everything that you're taught not to do. It really is. And I and I and I hate it and I get all choked up and not it's, wanting it's to say okay. anything bad no, it's like, to a creator, but it was just it was bad. We're not it's not a matter of saying anything bad. It's being critical and trying to be critical in a constructive manner, but when when everything comes together and there's there's no 
the lady was kind of funny. I mean, like... Not it's, really. It's one of those things where, like, this is sort of awkward, and I she don't... She went into the shop rude for no reason. The girl was rude to her for no reason. Her daughter was rude to her for no reason. They talked about going... And here's... You know, they talked about her needing a dress to go to a charity event. I assume the whole family was going to it. And they're all telling her at the end that she couldn't wear the dress she finally picked, except they're wearing shorts and tank tops. Or short dresses. No, they had shorts on. No, the girl had short dresses. Not the one on the dress on the on the thing. And I'm like, why are you so mean? Why is everybody so? Mean? I would rather watch the reality show about in-laws, which is really shrill, and it's on like the Learning Channel or Annie or whatever. I would rather watch that than this. I I just. Well, and it's you said it earlier. It's a matter of respect. And it's, it's respecting yourself, and it's respecting the work that you're doing, and it's respecting the space, and it's respecting everybody else who's in the space, and it's respecting what's come before it. And, and I just Scott don't Brown feel that that Brown is absolutely it. right. If we want to be taken seriously about this space, you we have, have to, to have, have standards. standards. And I'm not talking about some arbitrary, because I hear the, the comments coming, some arbitrary rules that come up from on high and say, you can't make it if you're not this or you're not that. No. I am talking about us as creators having enough respect for ourselves, for the medium, for Jenny Powell and everybody that puts together Celebrate the Web, for every other creator that has come before you on YouTube, in Celebrate the Web, in any competition, in any part of this space, to have enough respect for yourself, for your space, for the medium, to put your best content forward. And the reason I say this about this one is because I think it opposed to the ones with the kids is different. Mm -hmm. The kids just need mentoring. There is a point at which you look at, at something and you'd go, this is just not good enough to submit to a competition. And we need, I mean, people need to be realistic. And I do feel like I'm slapping a puppy. Right. Like you know, but, but I think Scott's right. We do have to have standards and, you need to take it seriously as creators. If you're going to make this, understand right. that just because it's coming from the web and being viewed on the web doesn't make this any less the entertainment industry or the entertainment business. And it is a business. And if you want to make it here, you need to take it seriously. Whether you're going to make a lot of money off of your video or not, whether you intend to make it as a web series or not, it's not a joke. And it's to be taken seriously. And... I feel like I'm slapping a puppy by saying this, and yet when I watched it, I was pissed that I wasted my time watching it because I assumed that every pilot was going to be up to a certain standard because they submitted themselves to a competition. Right. but And it's not that there isn't a genuine effort behind it. Of course there is. Because these people got together and created a show and submitted it to a contest. You know, I mean, that's, that's an extremely valid thing. And... I encourage you to do it again, but I would also encourage, it's just like, okay, it's like watching So You Think You Can Dance, and they have that one audition that's just not there, and they say, you know what, come back next year, and when you come back next year, take a couple acting classes, And maybe that's what it is, classes, because Higlet just said classes, she thinks it was a genuine classes. effort, because she spoke to the creator a lot on, on, the twi on Twitter, uh -huh. and she seemed to be new to the space, so if that's what it is, then they need mentoring, but... Like I said, come back in a year and after I don't you've want taken her, I don't want her to be put of off. Courses. I don't, and I've said this before, I feel like I'm slapping a puppy, and I don't want anybody to be put off. No. Because I do think we need mentoring. Right. And maybe it is that Celebrate the Web is going to have, and we'll talk to Jenny about this on Wednesday, maybe it is that Celebrate the Web is going to have to start rejecting pilots that aren't up to a certain standard. Mm -hmm. But, as a creator in this space, and this is a big beef for us across the board. And I'm not even talking about the mom or, you know, forgiving 1863 or any of these pilots now. I have a big, a big bitch in this space for any creator who comes into this space and doesn't learn about it before they make something. The creators who come in and say, we're doing something brand new or I'm groundbreaking or the web series space is only five years old. All of those three are wrong. The web series, series space has existed since 1994. That's when the first web series came out. Anything that's been done after that has not broken ground in the web series space or done something 
all that. They're not the first ones to think of doing it in this space. That happened a long time ago. Where we're breaking new ground now and where we're changing minds is in how good the content is getting, how aware we are of who we're creating for in the space in which they watch it, how people are consuming, interaction, grassroots community building. That's where we're breaking new ground. That's where we're showing people how social and interactive and immersive our content can be. But when you come into this space and, and you say, my content is groundbreaking, it had damn well better be. And I cannot tell you in the early parts of this of this show how many times we had people come on our podcast and tell us that they're creating a web series and had never watched another one before. That to me is irresponsible as hell. And while I believe that every pilot is submitted in a genuine reason, have you never watched a TV show before? Have you never watched a video on YouTube before? Have you never seen anything good before? I think there have to be... I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I am slapping a puppy. I don't know. You're not slapping a puppy. Because here's the thing. It's, it's the, the, like I said in the chat room, the effort and the time and the idea and everything put together in order to make something from nothing and submit it to a contest is valid. And it's a good thing. And it's something that, even if it falls flat and it's the most horrible thing anybody's ever seen ever, you know what? You still did something that a lot of other people didn't. You felt confident enough to make something from nothing and submit it despite whatever may come your way. And that Liz is Shannon incredible. Miller, we're going to go over tonight, so y'all just need to know. We're going to be about 30 minutes late. Liz Shannon Miller said something on a panel at, at uh, South by Southwest once that made me, that changed the way this show was, changed the way I reviewed shows, and made me not afraid, really, to say what we needed to say today. And that is, you are web series creators, you are not puppies. The nature of this business is criticism, and you need to be able to take it if you're going to get into this business. You need to be aware of what's happening in this space. Not everybody can pick up a camera and make something, no matter how earnest the effort. I applaud every creator who picks up a camera and writes something and picks up a camera to make it. Everybody who had the balls to, to submit something to celebrate the Web 6 should be applauded because at least you're up and you're doing something you are creating because you feel the need to create. However, just watching a show on TV and going, I can do that, and then picking up a camera and assuming that you can is wrong. There are things that need to be learned. There are experiences that need to be built upon. And not everybody can do it. And sometimes you just can't. Now, I'm not saying that about anybody in particular, but I think it is important. Very important. That we learn about this space every creator and that would just be like me falling back and saying well we 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 don't know anything about cameras or anything so we're just going to do our show well we we did that in the beginning but we've been steadily improving and trying to every time we do a show as we learn more about the space but just like i i think people need to be more careful in what they submit <coughs> to competitions like this i think competitions need to get more a little more discerning in what they accept and I think it is beholden to every creator in this space to know what is being done in this space. It's one of the reasons why I told you guys to watch Jan oh. uh, behind the scenes, uh, one, two, and six, because it is, again, another case of I'm clearly the first person from Hollywood who's ever gone to, and done this wonderful thing on the web. Never mind those of us who have been doing it since 1994. Um, how did Brendan Fong put it when when he it's like when I made him watch it on Twitter Columbus. when he says yes Christopher he said this is kind of like Christopher Columbus discovered the Americas long after people were already living there and it's like these people are discovering the web long after people have already been creating here <laughs> learn see, what happened in this space we're gonna start doing some trivia I think on our show you think yeah what are we gonna give away a free a free photo op with the toot and Greg just said it. <laughs> Yeah, applaud everybody who created something, but with that being said, if you watch American Idol, you know that not everybody is meant to sing. Right. It takes a lot of guts to get up there and audition, but some people aren't meant to do that. And and don't be discouraged if somebody says something horrible about and your hey, show. Hey, if you don't agree with us about your show, that's fine. Send me an email and tell me to fuck off and go make something better and make me eat my words. But you know what? At least in that same sentence, you can't blame me for not making you think you could do better. Don't, you know, don't, don't go the way of, oh, I'm never going to do this again. Go, you know what? Fuck those bitches. 
I'm going to do something awesome and they're going to eat my show for breakfast and suck it, you know, whatever. So, yeah. Um, before we start showing the trailer, there was an interesting <laughs> New York, New York to sitcom said, how do you not accept someone's submission? Mm-hmm. You can decide not to elect them as winners, but how do you tell them that they can't submit until you watch it? They yeah, have to yeah. submit for you to know that it wasn't good enough to submit, which is true. But you can have a submission committee. Tons of people submit to ITV Fest. Tons of people submit to Sundance. Not everybody gets accepted. Right. And some of those so are still bad. it could be, and, and that, fantastic. and that may, and we'll talk to Jenny about that. That may be the way that a, that the competition has to go. Now, I, I don't see Jenny ever doing that. No, I see her wanting to encourage and just leaving it open. Right. But I'm saying some competitions just say, you submit your show to this this body of of people, Committee. and then they will let you know if you've been accepted into this competition, right, or into this festival. I think it's the same. Right now, it's a free You know, like the same thing as, as what festival law. Right now, Celebrate the Web it isn't about that. It's about building community. It's about getting people to work together. And it's about getting new content. And that is the spirit of Celebrate the Web. And I think that every show that submitted to Celebrate the Web did so in the spirit of that competition and deserves to be applauded. And that's where we're going to leave it. And, no, I feel that when, when you guys have the award ceremony and everything else that happens, right, even though they're announcing live on our show and they're going to do everything and whatnot, mm-hmm. If you are all in the same room or can manage to get to go to an event all together or whatever, please, I encourage you, especially if you are a seasoned web series creator, to find these individuals. Help them. And help them. Mentor them. Talk to them. Have them come be an intern on your show or just do some free stuff for you or watch how you edit one day or something. I encourage you to go out and I think that is something we need in this space desperately. And speaking of Is a big brother... Is Jenny here? <laughs> she just popped in the Oh, good. Anyway. Um, I think it is It is something that we desperately need in this space, is we need a mentoring system in this space. Because, like I like I said about the other two pilots, um, Gemini and Forgiving 1863, I see such potential there. Mm-hmm. Such potential there. And I, I would love to see those creators, those young creators and those young actors and, and the people involved taken under the wing of the more seasoned creators in our space and mentored. I think it's huge. And the opportunity for that wouldn't exist if it wasn't for Celebrate right. the Web to, in, to begin with because this kind of competition didn't exist where anybody could get involved and could submit and make something quickly. Mm-hmm. And and then be encouraged to, when you all come together, to see to screen all of the pilots and to go through the, the, you know, the award-giving but process. But you guys also know how we that. feel about shows and I would have been dishonest if I would not have come down as hard as we did on the mom and I hated it because I do still feel like what Liz Liz Shannon Miller was talking about in that old in that in that old panel at South by I still do feel like I'm like I'm poking at a at a at a puppy like I'm slapping a puppy and I shouldn't I'm just gonna um, hug my puppy I'm going to hug my dog because that's what I... Because I just, I feel <laughs> terrible because there's so much passion there. But I, I I wish that particular pilot, I wish that they would have watched it and said, you know, it's not, it's not ready for this competition this year. Maybe if we reshoot some parts of it and we relight some parts of it and we rewrite some parts of it, we can make it better for next time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Wow. Do you realize we've talked about this for an hour? Yes, Jenny, you did miss the reviews um, of the pilots. <laughs> but they, I, I will tell you again, our top three are Bell and the Bot, Gray, and This Human Body. Yeah. Um, although I, really I, I very much do think that there was hope for several of the others across the board. I think there were a lot of sound issues this time. And think um, of it, look at it like this. We said this the last, let's first celebrate the Web 5. I'm going to say it again. When you make a pilot for this competition, especially if you want to just go ahead and make the web series because the team that you work with and everything that came together was was fantastic enough for you to continue it forward and actually want to make the show, the Celebrate the Web is a great way to start an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter campaign because you already have the hardest part, which is the pilot out of the way. And, and with that in mind, when I look at Celebrate the Web 6, there is only a small handful of shows that I would actually further encourage that. 
Others, I would say, let's you know what? Let's re-edit. Let's work together. To talk to this person, this person, this person. They can help you bring something else. And but I will say forward. this now that Jenny's in the room, and yeah. I will say this to her again on fa- on on the show on Wednesday. Um, I think the overall professional level production, mm, the quality okay. level of the overall pilots this time was slightly lower than I expected. Um, but we got a lot of new faces, and that was cool. Yeah. Um, before we move on to the pilots that we are, and, and hey, Danielle Earl and all of you guys who are in the chat room, you guys should get involved and celebrate the web next time. If you guys should be there, every creator should be doing something if they have the time. Speaking of, Greg Storm did a pilot called Black and White, and he didn't get it done in time enough for Celebrate the Web, but I had a chance to see it. Um, it had fantastic music. I want him to make that a show, too, but if Greg doesn't get a damn show done, I am going to spork out his eyes. Because I want Luck and Baby Dust, I want Black and White now, I want Zim the Series, and I want uh, Madison Avery. Wow, that's um, interesting. Black and White had <coughs> Craig Frank in it, which I love, Craig Frank. And then Cooper Harris pops up out of nowhere. Yeah. Did you see that Terrence Cray, who's the one who did Bell and the Boss, the only one who's done all three festivals? No, I didn't know that. Did Jenny just tell us that? Yeah! That's awesome. Because Jenny is the perpetuator of awesome random information. More so than myself, I think. So, <laughs> are we, we going to show some pilots today? We're just gonna... um, but I do have one quibble with you, Greg Storm. I have no idea why Cooper Harris's character started shooting. What up? <laughs> why? <laughs> Not that I don't enjoy seeing Cooper Harris handle a gun, because I love seeing Cooper That's Harris just awesome. do anything. But And I also want that song from the end, so if you could email me that, that would be awesome. Okay, <laughs> so now we are going to get back to oh, uh, pilots. And the first one we're going to show is by the incomparable Scott Brown. You know, Scott oh, Brown, oh, 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 oh. the Scott Brown. The Scott Brown. The Scott Brown. Blue movie Scott, Scott Brown. Brown. Because, you know, I still talk about Blue Movies. Because I loved that. Loved, loved, loved that Scott web series. Scott Brown. What? Um, and hopefully we can get him on the show soon. Ah. Um, what? This is the trailer <laughs> for an upcoming... Uh, what am I showing? I believe written and directed by Scott Brown Project called Stockholm. Check it out. Last night I had a dream we were inseparably entwined Like a piece of rope made out of two pieces of vine Held together holding each other with no one else in mind Like two atoms in a molecule inseparably combined Is it wrong that I want that music? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Anything that comes from the guy that brought you Blue Movies and Asylum cannot be bad. It's impossible. It's the truth. So be on the lookout for Stockholm. Go to watch Stockholm.com. Um, you have to. You have to do it because that trailer's killer. Um, <laughs> and it's Scott Brown, the Scott Brown. Who still to this day produced my all time favorite Celebrate the Web pilot? Not produced, but directed. My all time favorite Celebrate the Web pilot. The one with Cooper Harris. Oh, yeah. I'm like, wait, did I miss one? I was so <laughs> into that story that I was pissed when it ended, and I'm still pissed we don't have a show. I want to know what happened. They're working on it. I know. They're working on it. It was such it. a good role for Cooper Harris. I can't even tell you. Um, I, like, I like this one, though. I think it looks good. Uh, we've got some really interesting trailers for you now. We are going to move through these very, we're very quickly. We're just going to go one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. Well, we're going to talk a little bit. Not even. Just go. we got three minutes. Let's move it. The next one is called Not Now John. Okay. It is a web series based on the documentary movie A Letter to Marty. Check it out.
I want to dream like that. Can you sign my good fellow? Well, he was the master. Work. master. He was the You're the master, Mr. Yeah. Scorsese. Yeah, I've never asked anyone to go to see the movie. I want to see Lines Around the Block tomorrow. This is a, a stupid town. It is a stupid town in the sense that it is the, the uh, maybe the one of the largest cities in the world. So go along with everything that goes along. It's uh, corporate owned. It's a, it's a town owned by Hollywood. And it's about time it grew up. It's about time that it, it, it took art and said, come on, baby, show me something. And we're showing them something. And there are not many people showing anything. All right, nobody move. This is a robbery. Nobody move. What is this, a squirrel? And there are not many people that will go out and put themselves on a line in this world today because everyone's frightened. We're doing it for you. Oh, oh I'm not getting any younger. And I'm telling you that you're going to see the greatest performances. Like, let people know that I... I have something to offer. I mean, creatively speaking, of course, I just... I mean, I'm wearing skulls. When we started this movie, I was afraid of this movie because I thought no one really is interest, that interested in, in actors or what they really go through if we were really to put it on the line. It's taking him so long. Uh, he's just putting his uniform on, man. Don't hey! Right. Hey, what's all the ruckus out here, huh? Hands where I can see him. What are you looking at, you little four-eyed prick? Don't you see, John? We're nothing if we don't exceed our limitations. I'm sorry. You don't. You don't have to ask your manager. Why don't you just take this little ticket, you walk over there, wherever the little stamp machine is, and you stamp the time and date on it, and I'll be validated and I'll be on my way. How's that sound? Super Sean? Sean Penn? I have to go, John. My planet needs me. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We didn't talk about John Cassavetes. It's all about entertainment, kid. Entertainment. I'm sick that this is such a little sissy town that they will only go to see something that is going to be successful, that a corporation says is great. Let me see your headshots. And I'm telling you, we have something so much better, so wonderful, that you are just privileged to see this movie. I'm looking for a leading man type, like Vin Diesel, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Smell the rocks cooking? I'm sick because there are just such a bunch of sissies in this world that they won't go out and see something that's wonderful. And they hear it's wonderful. And other people will tell them it's wonderful. But is it going to be a success? Is it going to be a success? I don't care if it's going to be a success. I want those suckers to come in there and to see this movie because they'll see what they always wanted to be. And that is to be theatrical, to be wonderful, to be, to be liked, to be friends to have something in their life that is warmer and to regard someone that has more guts than you do. He'll lead, I'll lead, we'll all go and we'll take a chance and we'll try to express ourselves and hope that somebody will recognize that expression. Uh, I don't care about CBS, NBC, ABC, television sucks. Dude, Marty's angry. <laughs> Marty's angry about... Right? But that looks like a good trailer. Yeah. Uh, the next trailer we're going to show you is just for cuteness sake. Because it looks interesting. It's a YouTuber who is going to make a web series. Um, but it's a little bit different than some of the YouTubers web series you've seen so far. It premieres on June 28, 2012 and it's called Tug the Bull Terrier.
Now you know there's a story behind it. Bastard right? stole our idea. What? So now I can't do a day in the life of cricket. Yes, you can. But there's a big, big story behind him. You should check out their Facebook and everything else. I've seen it. There is a story behind yeah, him. You guys a, should check it out. The big story behind Tug and, and how he came to be and, and everything like that. So, yay. What's the next one? Uh, the <laughs> one next, after the other. We've got four more to show you. Um... One of them is, this one I just think it's going to be funny. It's a gamer thing. Again, I know I was railing about that earlier. Oh. But it's a gamer thing, and this one looks funny. It's called A Thousand Ways to Kill a Noob. Oh, this one. They're actually taking <laughs> submissions. I know. I think it's going to be fun. I'm going to put something. I'm going to submit something. That's going to be fun. It's a different way of doing it. Um, okay, the next one. Yes. Hey, we're not even that far over time. I can slow down a no, little bit. No, keep going. What? Because I'm hungry. Oh, okay. The <laughs> next one is called, and to make sure that you guys are writing all of this down, and you can slow down the credits when this goes they go very live on YouTube. They go very slowly. Um, so that you guys can get all of the information. Um, the next one is called Epilogue the Series. Oh. Reported infections are on the decline, but the latest numbers show the global death toll at 55%. The entire world is dying. Pretty much everybody from the foster home is gone now. You're sure this next mission will work? If your research is correct, the key to stopping the current pandemic lies in your 14th century French village. My research is never wrong. If but for one child, we might not have this pandemic. Might not have war. We might not be able to go to the recent future, but that doesn't mean we can't go back. We were standing in medieval France, and you flashed back to some collusion syndrome! You asshole! With everything that's going on, walking out that door, that one little change... destroy this timeline too. I think it looks interesting. That's cool. Yeah? I, I like think that, that one looks really interesting. Okay. Interesting premise. Our next pilot, or not not pilot, <laughs> or trailer, it's kind of a teaser for the second <laughs> season of Brooklyn is in Love, which is written and directed by Danielle Earle, who you see in the chat room. And um, it tells the story of three 20-somethings living in New York City, uh, Nikki, Diana, and Brian. Mm -hmm. And they find comfort in themselves as they kind of go through the life looking for love and finding out what it means to be alive, I guess, in their own way. I think the show is really good. Um, they had some technical issues in the first season, and, and she improved upon those and got better as the season went along. 
Uh, second season is coming soon, and I hear there's going to be a sneak peek going out this week, too. So here is the teaser trailer for season two of Brooklyn is in Love. Charlie. Hey. Uh, Hi. I know how you're always out of wine, uh -huh. so I brought you a new bottle. Thanks. Mm -hmm. How are you? Good. Good. I just got back from Boston. I was up there. <coughs> excuse me. I was up there seeing my, my family. A couple of months. And uh, but I, I miss the city. Oh. And most importantly, I uh, I, I missed you. Um, I'm sorry, but you know. It sounds like it was good for good for you up there, you know. Um, yeah. You seem like you have a, a clearer head, so it's. Did you hear what I said? It's, it's good. I you said know, it's I, I missed. Good. I mi it's very good. I missed you. Charlie? I miss you, Charlie. You left that night. Um... Diane. I, I didn't think I would ever see you again. Uh -huh. And uh, here you are with. Um, wine and things keep changing but here you are your leader and um yeah. diane they keep changing um i'm here now i'm here now and i'm here for good Cute. It is, and this, the first season was really well done. I have such respect for Danielle and what she accomplished with the first season, and I love New York-based web series. They have a certain look about them that other shows just don't have. There's a certain grit and a certain look to the city that I love, and I love the way she's telling her story, and I'm really looking forward to uh, season two, and I hope you all are too. So it's Cricket. <laughs> My gosh. Okay, loud. last two, and these are some really interesting ones. Um, this next one is called Verve and the trailer is interesting I think the show is going to be interesting the website is lastphotographer.blogspot.ca slash 2012 slash 6 slash verge what is verge I hope you put that at the end if I found the right one if not I apologize hey here is the trailer for verge deep down Inside, you know things are not right with this world. Strange things happen. Things that cannot be explained by reason or intellect. Your rational mind tries to stop you from going down the bleak path of understanding the terrifying darkness. You turn back to save your sanity, as if closing your eyes will somehow make them disappear. You go forward, day by day, go to the same meaningless work, watch the same garbage on TV, go to bed in another night, no different from any other night, but you stay awake, looking up at the shadows, peering into the darkness, trying to catch a glimpse of the puppeteer pulling the strings. And in an attempt to bring illumination, you make a desperate move to understand. And in knowing, become 
one of the shadows yourself. I'm really like fascinated and interested in this one so far. Yeah. Don't you think? Yes. And finally, and only 15 minutes late, check it out. Ooh. The, we have one called Silent City that'll be launching in the summer of 2012. It is silentcityseries.com. And I think this trailer is outstanding. So here it is, the trailer for Silent City. Only take what you can carry. Only kill what you can eat. Don't make bonds you can't break. Never ask why. Never look back. I'm stoked about that one. I really am. Seriously. Great location. Great trailer. Great graphics. It even looks like the fight choreography is good. That was awesome, Right? That was some, like, Morlock, you know, underground crazy shit happening there. That was awesome. That's like Book of Eli crap. Yeah. Like Book of Eli. That's wow. what it reminded me of. SilentCitySeries.com. Definitely want to go and follow them. Um, and that's it for us. And hey, at the end of this, you'll see some credits rolling by slowly. And that'll give you all of the information except for Verge, which is wrong, but I put the right one in there. Yep. And um, you'll be able to get the information from the credits. And when <laughs> we put it up smooth. on YouTube later tonight, uh, you'll be able to get it from there as well. Please join us on Wednesday. Yay! SilentCityCity.com is not it. No. But hold on, Wednesday, on none of these things. <laughs> on uh, on our podcast, when we will be announcing, along with Jenny Powell and Logan, the winners to Celebrate the Web 6 and talking about mentoring and helping and lifting up this space with the people from Celebrate the Web. We are excited to do that. We are excited for you guys to go and check out these trailers and we're excited to see Continuum the television show tonight. Okay. Um, I don't know who did Silent City the series. I really don't. Uh, Draco Gen, The Crimson Engine. They did have a Kickstarter, it looks like. Yes. They had a $10,000 goal. They raised $12,055 of their goal. Um... I thought I had seen something on here that they shot outside of L.A. They were not an L.A.-based web series. I could be wrong. But I'm checking now just to be... I thought it, I thought it dealt with New York. I'm checking now just to be sure, but I don't know. Um, I do pledge that we will find out 
more about Silent City for you guys so that we can get them on the show and show you more stuff about what's going on with them because it is one we're very excited about. So um, check out the credits. Please join us on Wednesday for our show when we announce the winner, help announce the winners of Celebrate the Web 6. And join us next Sunday when we will bitchy, be bitching about something else and we will be showing you some more exciting trailers and or behind the scenes video from killer shows in this space. Thank you guys for watching. Without you guys, there is no us. We do all of this because we want you guys to see all these great shows and find out about them. Wait, I have to find our blog talk link. People are asking. Oh, you better get that then. You better get that link, that blog talk link. I think that's the right one. I think we have the end Yes, yeah, Silent City, like you said, is set in New York City. Yeah. So I'm assuming it's also filmed there. I would imagine. If it's not, they're doing a great job. Killer location. Why is it not working? Because the thing is messed up. Do you... Do you have it? Because I can't get it, and I would like it. Our blog talk thing? Yes. Sure, I can find it. Do, do, do. Dead air is always yeah, good. Yeah, that's what I um, said. Can you do it with, you know... Can you talk to the people? I'm trying to find it. The interwebs is poopy. I got it. I got it. She's got it, and the interwebs is not poopy. It is poopy. On this computer, it's poopy. See, other people did it for us. Look at that. Thank you, Look Greg. Look at that. Thank you, Greg. Thank you to all of the shows today. And remember, it's Stockholm, Silent City, Not Now John, Epilogue the Series, Tug the Bull Taylor, Carrier, Verve, A Thousand Ways to Kill a Noob, Brooklyn is in Love. And thank you to every single creator who submitted something for Celebrate the Web 6. Just because it wasn't our cup of tea doesn't mean you shouldn't still keep creating. Thank you, everybody. Now go and watch some web series. Yeah, slow on the update. Yeah. Good night, everybody. I don't have to have that kind of speed. I don't think anyone here has defined what net, 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 net neutrality is. It's not a big truck. It's a series of tubes. And, and here we have this one situation. Ten will be streaming across that, that inter, internet. I, 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 I don't think uh, they're, 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 we are saying that they cannot. I, I think uh, it, it's absolutely essential. And the center, whether you realize that, you're, you're asking for regulation for, for massively invading this world of the Internet. Mr. Chairman. Oh, yes, sir. I'm sorry. I, I thought you were finished. I'm sorry. No, I'm not finished. I, but, but when we take uh, uh, the, uh, and uh, fiber optics really uh, indicate that anyone that wants to use it, it's a series of tubes.